Hey, this is Tim from Words of Grace today from my living room. I want to do a quick video on how to uh, implement the plowing Bible reading method. And I trust you're doing that this, uh, this new year. So let's look at, at the Bible together. Ask the Lord to open our eyes, pray, first of all. Then we'll read carefully. And then we'll record the observations answering the few questions. Genesis 15. The nice thing here is to guide you through the questions, and um, they're not magic, you can do this in any notebook, but that, uh, that, that you have the habit, make the habit, because uh, sometimes we forget to, to make a habit, and uh, this, this will just, just help you think through these questions. So you can either write them down in your own notebook or order this on, online. I'm enjoying using this. Uh, what does the text say? Well, this is the covenant. Genesis 15, so I'll write that there. The covenant between Abraham and God. Abraham believes, and the Lord makes it a unconditional promise. All right, very good. So we're in the plowing method here, so we're not trying to dig too deep, though there's so much in here. But just a quick summary, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't for your children's children to read. I like highlighting a few things throughout uh, the Bible in, in uh, colored pencil. So, So I'll take this and I'll Always cover it. belief in green. Okay, that's our first question, Genesis 15. I'm doing the McShane reading program. So you go back to the back and cross off uh, Genesis 15 for today. And there's the. Oh, we're not done. And we move to the second question. What does it teach me about God? So many truths here. And, and this can turn right into your uh, worship and prayer time. You can go right to this and pray these things and, and answer in praise. Genesis 15. What does the text teach me about God? Well, first it starts out saying, God is a shield. God is our shield. Because he's our shield, we're, our reward is very great. So, so our reward is the Lord. And we're thinking through uh, different things that could cost us, like the temptations of the evil one, the slanders of, of Satan. And remember that God is our shield. He upholds us. He helps us. He thwarts those um, arrows. And what a blessed thought that God is our shield. God is an abundant giver. And I'm going to say a gracious giver. Graciously abundant giver. And God condescends to make covenants with us and as you think carefully about this passage there's this sacrifice split in two the blood goes down into the into the little ravine there and and God says let's make this covenant I'll keep this covenant but Abraham sleeps and he doesn't walk through so God's saying if this covenant is broken between the parties I will be torn in two and shed my blood in your place. So God pays the penalty for our sin, pays the penalty for our covenant breaking. And that is a very precious truth. It will feed your soul for many years to come. 
And that will turn into time of praise, thanking the Lord for who he is and what he's done. What does the text teach me about how I should live today? Wow. Well, <clears throat> first, I should keep my promises. I should respond in love and faithfulness to this covenant-keeping God. I think also just resting in God as a shield, that God knows the future here. He's telling him about something that will happen for 400 years of difficulty. And yet God has that in his control, knowing the Amorites' iniquity is not yet complete, knowing when he's going to deliver. God's got all of history under control, and I can rest today, rest in God's control, even over the years of captivity. Good way to begin the thoughts of the day. Those are this the three questions. That's Genesis. Now we move on to Nehemiah. Nehemiah is reading for today. Let me encourage you to do that. Those three questions each day. What does the text say? And you're trying to record general observations, themes, and a summary of the meaning that you read. And then question two, what does it teach me about God? Use that to worship. What does it teach me about how I should live today? Write that out and use that. That goes right into your to-do list, right? All right, well, you can order this uh, online or get your own booklet, but make sure that you're in a Bible reading program each day in the plowing method here. See, we did that in 10 minutes. The plowing method. Now we move on to the next chapter. And if you're not reading out loud, uh, you could at least get through three chapters in probably 25 minutes. Uh, that's, that's very easy each day to do. Uh, but may your time in the Word be sweet today, uh, walking with the Lord, hearing from Him, praising Him, and obeying Him.